Hello, I'm Aubrey Shepard. I've been around wetland and streams all my life. I spent more time on streams than on roads back in my younger years. But uh, drive for an hour to get to a stream and stay all day. And I know what the uh, erosion's like. And I know from out in the rural areas, we see it, destruction. But the worst damage to our streams is from this, this city, the, the streams immediately adjacent to us or that come out of this city. And I, I, I talked to a good friend two days ago who has commercial property. And he's able to use the business there under this new regulation uh, as long as he chooses. When he sells it, somebody else can use that building, as I understand it. However, uh, they may not want to do what he wants to do and may want to build something different. So I sympathize with his fear that uh, he won't be able to sell it. So, and I think we all do. However, we're talking about something as a couple of people like Leaf have pointed out, he bought property without knowing that it was really in a floodplain. If he'd been in town a little longer, he had heard the battle over the town branch and our attempts to prevent increased paving and concreting of uh, putting in roofs and filling with red dirt upstream from his house. And we failed in that effort. Uh, we did succeed by buying some property that also would have been, in, if it had been paved and built on, and it became a city park, and we raised money to do that. That wasn't easy, and it took uh, two years for the developer to hold the property who had had it approved by this panel. So we've been fighting this fight for a long time. We're trying to protect people downstream, as well as what uh, others have mentioned about habitat, the uh, native species in that riparian zone should be wide and, and uh, my house is uh, about uh, <clears throat> less than 100 yards from the town branch and it hasn't flooded but uh, water pours through the yard it soaks in because it's on a it's in a, an area over a groundwater fault it's depressional wetland and when you find that kind of place the old timers knew not to build on it they might use it for pasture in case of what is behind my house. I understand it wasn't even being used for haying or pasture in the 1930s when it was adjacent to or part of a, a dairy farm. But people came along in toward the 50s and bought lots from those old farms and built along the stream edge, much closer than, than the old timers would have built, built on both sides of an old road there. And nobody thought about these issues because they'd never, they'd never considered that all this pavement would go upstream. So a lot of these folks here tonight, we understand what they're unhappy about, why they're fearful, because they were sold property that should not have been sold for development, should not have been allowed to be developed the way it was. But some of it occurred more than 100 years ago. The destruction of the forest and riparian zones started occurring maybe 150 years ago, what the city was formed of uh, 1831 or 1839. But before that, the settlers were, were ripping it up, cutting the timber out, and so forth. So we do have invasive species, but some of them are important simply because they're all there is holding in some of the stream banks. And if there are plants that do a good job, uh, you, you can't just readily cut them and, and rip them out, replace them with natives, because you can't get something to grow there. If it floods during that year, it washes away. So I've spent a lot of time on these streams in our city, all of them that are being discussed, and I've walked them and photographed them, and I've got a lot of those photographs online and sometimes my comments, but a lot of the pictures are just self-explanatory that uh, something shouldn't be going on where it's going on and that uh, we've made mistakes in the past and this this new ordinance would allow a lot of things to be grandfathered in and that should be you know that would be enough for me uh, but then i don't plan to get rich when i die 
because that's the only time I expect to sell my property. I won't need the money after I'm gone, and uh, I hope my heirs will be able to make a living because uh, that's, that's not how they'll make a living because I've bought a couple old houses that are uh, not very valuable even now. But if they were, I would not have bought one that had, was, did not have usable, that was not set far enough away from the stream. I would have recognized that. Most people have a, don't have the experience with streams to recognize it. So you can't say to them, well, you shouldn't have bought it. But as in certain cases we know of, maybe some of the people here have actually had to go back on the, uh, the closing people, the people that provided their title, and say, how come I wasn't told this was in a floodplain? And a few years ago, out near Beaver, on the, in the flood, floodway of Beaver Lake, a whole subdivision was built, and I remember one place was almost up to the second floor, and this was several years ago, big floods in 2004, and they did sue and got enough money to build a new house and so forth, but they probably lost a lot of things in that home if they'd been told that Beaver Lake could legally back up there in a case of a flood ahead of time. So, you know, it's, it's a lot of public education that goes with this. So maybe it shouldn't be quite such a rush, but to people who had experience with it and seen the reality of the flooding and what it does to people and how if you build up here, the guy downstream will suffer. And so many times it's a well, the engineer will say, well, we plan this, uh, it won't increase the flooding. But incrementally it will, and quite often they're building by replacing the absorbent soil, the way the water got back down into the groundwater, uh, into those caverns, into those crevices, into that karst underground bedrock, and it's going to increase. So some of these guys that are talking about saving their property, they're going to lose it anyway when they put a dog kennel out there, and the dogs will wash away. And I can show you a couple of instances of that. They put another building out there, and that will wash away or be destroyed. Mr. So Shepherd, if you, if you would. I, I'm going to round, round it up, Audie. I, uh, I do like to, I could talk about this all night. But I think that people need to understand that this is for everyone's protection. And it's, it's. Uh, not designed to take anything away from anyone. Thank you. Bye. Thank you, sir. Any other member of the public would like to speak to this item? I have a question. How many uh, people find out about an October 12th meeting? Ma'am, if you would, 